Hey everybody! Okay, so you're probably wondering why I'm outside so much, but how can you not want to be outside with views like this? That's a waterfall! Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> okay, so I found a bench for us to keep on reading our story together. However, there's a waterfall in the background, so that might not work out with all the noise in the background. So if I can't do it here, I'll find some place else for us to keep on reading our story together. Chapter six. The wood was delivered later that day and no one came by without shaking their heads at Penny and saying that she and Joshua were out of their minds. Don't pay them any mind, said Penny. We'll soon be out on the ocean anyway. I suppose you're right, said Joshua, and they began to build. Now you might think it was a strange sight, a girl and a dog building a boat, and you are right. It certainly was the most strangest thing anyone had ever seen, but neither Penny nor Joshua minded. It's going to be a rather small boat, remarked Joshua as they nailed the boards into place. It's better than nothing, replied Penny. Besides, it only needs to fit two people. Joshua was so busy that he didn't realize that Penny was planning to come along. He was just so eager to be out at sea again. How did you happen to be a captain in the first place? asked Penny. Joshua hesitated. I don't really know. It's all I remember. I expect I was born at sea and never left. You mean you've never been on land before? No. Well, do you like it? Well, not very much. I keep feeling a call to the sea. I know I belong there. Do you know why? No, I just belong there. It's instinct. Oh, I understand that. Joshua looked at Penny. Maybe, just maybe, some humans weren't so bad after all. Look at it, Joshua! We really finished it! Penny and Joshua stepped back to look at their creation. True, it was not a big boat, but it was big enough. It was sturdy and strong, and on the bow of the ship was painted the name, Sea Wolf. I can never thank you enough, Penny, said Joshua. He was proud of his new ship, for he had built it with his own paws. And Penny's help, of course, but Joshua was proud of it just the same. Now I can finally get back to sea. Joshua ran up to the boat's ladder and climbed up to the deck. To his surprise, Penny came up as well. When do we sail? asked Penny. We? asked Joshua. But Penny hadn't heard. I can't wait to sail in a ship that we built all by ourselves. Let's set sail tomorrow. Joshua suddenly realized that he had a problem. How was he to get Penny to understand that he sailed alone? Still, without her, there wouldn't have even been a ship. Joshua decided that she could certainly leave after a few days. He could deal with that. Yes, Penny, tomorrow it is. Chapter 7 They set sail the next day. It was perfect weather for sailing. The winds blew just right, the sun was shining, and the waves rolled softly. You were right, Joshua, exclaimed Penny. This really is living at its best. It certainly is. Joshua stood on the deck and turned his face toward the breeze. Ah, he closed his eyes. Now this was where he belonged. Later that day, when they were out in the deeper waters, Penny called Joshua over to the railing. Joshua, what's that in the water? She whispered in excitement. Her eyes were big and almost afraid. Joshua walked over. There, swimming in the water, were mermaids. They wore flowing dresses of blue and green to match the ocean. Their hair was long and shining, and they were playing among the waves, singing in the most beautiful voices you ever heard. Oh, those are some mermaids, said Joshua. Mermaids? You mean they really exist? I'm not seeing things, shouted Penny. Of course they exist. Can't you see them, plain as day? Why, yes, I can, but I thought that they were only in fairy tales. Joshua shook his head. Of course mermaids are real. Who doesn't believe in mermaids? Don't you humans know anything about ocean magic? Ocean magic? Don't tell me you've never heard of ocean magic. What do you think keeps the waves rolling or the sea breezes blowing? Why do you think mermaids can exist? And what other explanation do you have for the frightening hurricanes and devouring whirlpools that the ocean has to offer? I thought you were more sensible, Penny. Penny couldn't take her eyes off the mermaids. But what controls the ocean magic? Joshua took a deep breath. The sea orb. The what? The sea orb. It keeps the ocean magic flowing. Without it, the ocean would storm out of control. 
It lies in the salt sea caves of the sea wolf himself. Now you're going to tell me that the sea wolf is real too. Of course. No one's ever seen him, but we know he exists. He is the keeper of ocean magic, Penny. The sea orb lies within his care, and he is the only one allowed to use it. Penny shook her head. I'll never doubt another fairy tale for as long as I live. But look, the mermaids are trying to tell us something. Joshua looked down into the water. Chapter 8 The mermaids were certainly trying to get Joshua's attention. Can I help you? he asked. My sisters and I were coming out to find someone who can help, said a mermaid with brown hair. The ocean is done for! Would you care to explain that? asked Joshua. The mermaid nodded. You see, my sisters and I were just swimming in the water, playing among the waves like we always do. Of course, except on stormy days. On stormy days, we... Is that what you wanted to say? asked Joshua. Oh, heavens no! Now, where was I? Oh, yes. We were swimming in the waves and enjoying ourselves when we came upon a dolphin who looked worried. We asked him if he wanted to play with us, but he didn't, and so I asked why, and he didn't answer for the longest time, and when he finally did, I wasn't sure if I'd heard him right, and... Joshua was, began to grow a bit impatient. Mermaids were the most chatty beings in the sea, and the last thing he wanted to do was get caught in the middle of a long, tedious conversation. Can we just get to the point? he asked. But that's what I was getting to. And I asked him what was wrong, and he said, her blonde sister interrupted, and he said that the sea orb had been stolen. Stolen? shouted Joshua and Penny. Are you sure? The brunette sister was eager to keep on with the story. But of course we didn't believe him. You can never just believe everything you hear, you know. And so we went to the Mer King to ask him about it, and we had to wait the longest time, but at least they were hospitable and gave us some sea cakes while we waited. And when we were finally admitted to his grand throne room, we- What happened? Joshua almost shouted. This time, her red-haired sister interrupted. And he said it was true. The sea orb has been stolen. But that's impossible, said Joshua. The sea wolf himself was guarding it. Who stole it? asked Penny. A pa, a pa, pa, started the blonde mermaid. Just spit it out, said Joshua. A pirate, blurted out the brunette. Joshua suddenly looked worried. Don't tell me it was, it was Captain Killian McGregor, she confirmed. Oh no, Joshua stood up. If he's involved, this could mean the end of the ocean magic. But the merking said something else, interrupted the brunette. And it was, now what was it? Oh, I forget. The red-haired sister sighed. Oh, sister, you're always forgetting things. The merking said that the sea orb could only be used when the moon is full and the tide is high. So we only have a few days to stop him, said Joshua. Penny was confused. Wait, how could Captain Killian breathe underwater? Joshua told me that the sea orb was within the salt sea caves of the sea wolf. The mermaids turned to Penny. Didn't you ever hear of Captain Killian before? asked the brunette. Penny shook her head. You humans are so uninformed, said the mermaid. If you had ever heard anything about Killian McGregor, you would understand that the man is half merman himself. Half merman? exclaimed Penny. Yes, that's why he knows so much about ocean magic. But unlike the rest of the sea creatures who are so happy under the magic of the sea, Captain Killian wants the magic all to himself. He's been looking for the sea orb for years and years now, but no one ever thought he would actually find it. Penny turned to Joshua. What can we do? There's only one thing to do, he said firmly. We'll have to stop him. <laughs>